My name is George Dumont. Most uh, most everybody here in this community obviously knows me, but in the flying community, uh, I don't even have a nickname. It's, I'm still George Dumont. <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah. So we have a, uh, an association called the the Powered Parachute, uh, the Main Powered Parachute Association. We're about 38 members, and of the 38 members, we probably have uh, a good 15, 16 that fly regularly. Some still have aircraft but don't fly as regular. We have, um, we used to have about a, about 12 fly-ins a year. Now we've cut that down to about eight. And we'll meet at different parts of the state. Today we're in Fort Kent. We just happen to be in Fort Kent and the folks love coming here to Fort Kent obviously because uh, it's a great site. Uh, Fort Kent has a really, really nice uh, grass strip. We've been working on this strip now for over a dozen years and uh, it was turning to brush but we kind of restored it back it's come back fully uh, we have other fixed wing airplanes that fly out of here a few that fly out of here and we have some that even visit recently we had uh, uh, somebody from Atlanta that came in and just uh, found out about the the remote site here they came out they camped out they were socially distanced from everybody obviously but they were going to stay one night they ended up staying two nights and three days so they really liked it here. But our association meets here once a year, and because we're so far north that we make it a, a one-week trip in Arista County. So they'll be here until Wednesday, uh, roughly, and then we're going to Presque Isle and be flying out of Paul Sears Field. Everybody knows who Paul Sears is. He's a famous photographer in this area. Paul loves to, for, to host us up there. He's got a nice grass trip as well. So you can see here all the campers that have... Uh, that have camped out here. We're, I don't know, we're probably about eight or ten campers that have uh, come up here. They're behind each of these uh, uh, is a, it's a trailer that's hauling their airplane. And, uh, we even have one guy here that's up here from New Hampshire. He's up, uh, has come all the way up here with his wife from New Hampshire. So uh, some of the campers actually have uh, you know, where they can actually, uh, they're the toy haulers. They, they'll actually put the airplanes right in the back of the toy haulers. So we've been flying generally twice a day. Uh, we'll, we'll fly in the morning uh, and the evenings because the winds are most favorable during that time. Um, we can fly in winds uh, up to 10 or more, but it's not very comfortable to fly in those winds because generally we get bounced around. A powered parachute is is it kind of a pendulum so anything that the wind reacts to the to the wing the, the parachute part reacts to us on the bottom as well so that's why we are most favorable to fly in the early mornings and in the evenings it makes for nice flying so we're going to be taking off here pretty soon so uh, most of them have just been flying locally some people uh, this yesterday morning we flew over eagle lake uh, uh, one fellow has a camp up in the uh, um, from Parham, the guys from Parham, he's got a camp up on St. Freud. So he made it pretty much up to St. Freud and turned around. And, and it's kind of cool to see a bunch of us in the air instead of just me in the air here locally. But we really have a, a good time flying the area. And we'll fly all over the place. And in the evening, it's a real light show here. Uh, last night we had over a dozen people from just stopping or, or parked on the side of the road watching us fly in and out and doing our maneuvers. And uh, we try to stay safe, obviously. Uh, and uh, it's like anything else, piloting uh, altitudes your friends, so you want to make sure you get enough altitude, we have issues, we, we can come down. It's nice to fly around here though, because there's a lot of fields, yeah. and what we're flying really could, could land on almost any field. <laughs> so this is uh, a powered parachute, an example, a good example of a powered parachute. So, uh, most of these powered parachutes are two-seaters, so we can fly a passenger. In order to uh, Fly a passenger though, you have to be a licensed pilot. You need at least a minimum of a sport pilot license. Uh, and many of our, our pilots are also private pilot license. We even have one that's a Vietnam veteran pilot, uh, flew in the Vietnam War, so he's our president, John Goebel. This aircraft here that I own has a 100 horsepower 912 Rotex in it. Um, one of two here that's here this weekend. They're probably the most powerful that we have here. Uh, we have another gentleman that's flying a 100 horsepower motor as well. And the rest of these in this background here uh, are two-stroke engines. These are, these are 65 horsepower two-stroke Rotex aviation engines as well, 583s. But you'll notice they're 
almost all, all of them have uh, two seats on them. Well, actually, all of them here have two seats on them. And some do not have two seats. Uh, we, know, we know them as part 103 uh, aircraft. FAA allows those aircraft to fly if they don't have any passengers, have five gallons of gas maximum, and they weigh less than 350 pounds. So there are some aircraft that can fly uh, without a passenger and without a license. Uh, those people obviously, I guess FAA doesn't, doesn't care if you're going to take your own life in your hands, go have at it, but obviously they're flying in our airspace as well. So, you know, we like to think that no matter what you're flying, that you're flying under uh, flight rules under FAA and everything else, because this is also, this airport here also hosts general aviation. So we use radios, um, we use radio frequencies, uh, we use air courtesy, and uh, we don't want any air incursions, obviously. And, you know, it's a, it's a big space up there. The chances of us hitting another airplane are pretty, uh, you know, pretty, pretty rare. But on the same token, when we're getting converging by an airport where airports and where aircraft are used landing or whatever, there's more chance of a, of a mid-air collision. So we've got to be very careful as we come into these areas, making sure that we have visual on everybody that's there and that we follow the rules. With no wind, uh, almost all these aircraft will fly between 30 to 35 miles an hour. It's because the wing on these is a ram air wing. And once the ram air wing gets full, gets inflated, it's the fastest the airplane's going to fly, unless you're in a headwind, which is going to slow you down, or a tailwind, which is going to speed you up. But uh, they have to be, the wings have to be launched. Um, Don will probably have some video here later on about how, the, how we launch these, how we set these up. There's a very meticulous way to set up these wings and, uh, and we, how to launch them. And obviously the most risk there is in any flight would be the, the takeoff and the landing. You know, there's the more you need the most amount of skill. But I'll say like a friend of mine would say, who flies, he says, well, you know, take off, that's, man that's, uh, that's optional. But landing, that's kind of mandatory, you know, so. we're doing right now is we're laying out the wing. Every airplane needs a wing. Even a helicopter has a wing. Uh, except they're blades, but they look much like a wing. There's a very distinct shape of a wing for an aircraft to fly. What I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm laying out the chute so that we can launch this thing properly. Sometimes it doesn't launch right, so we, but we don't take off until it's until everything looks good. That's why you'll see uh, most of them when they take off, they've got to do quite a rollout before they're checking to make sure there's no lines that are crossed, no lines over the wing. The wing is not left, not right. It's centered, and everything looks good. Then we take off. If not, we'll abort, reset the wing, and then uh, make another attempt at the takeoff. You know. There's two ways to uh, two ways to set up the wing. One of them is called inverted. Most of the guys here use inverted. It's laying the chute straight out flat on the ground, and uh, and I like stack. Uh, you'll see how I stack mine in a minute. I just feel that uh, I was taught that way, and I always feel good about stacking my wing, and that's just the way it is. All right. Oh, yeah. You leave it on the ground. Well, for now. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna pull them. Up. Just making sure my steering lines are good. Making sure it's not a huge amount of tangle. And then I'm gonna do on the stack process. I'm gonna pull it. Hopefully here. Okay, George. Stack process. I'm pulling it, and as you can see, the chute is stacking itself. One, 
one layer over another layer. I like this method because all my lines are out and I can see my lines. Now I'm going to start to lay out the chute so that I'll get a good inflation. Making real careful that this one line on the end is out because we're going to have a, a what we call a line over, a line over an end. It's going to be on the ends. It won't be in the middle. John, did you have someone wire your house after all? Or did you still do it yourself? Yeah, I think so. It's complicated. Oh, the new code. No, we don't have to follow the new 2020 code because the state said you didn't have to. I can the wing actually has <coughs> two chambers, it's really two parachutes here. And this is an air chamber where the, the wing fills up. I called it a ram air wing and that's what we know. You'll notice in the, in the videos when they're flying, it'll look like there are mouths that are open and that's the area that grabs the air and fills the wing up. How long it's supposed to keep up? All week. All week? Yep. After you're famous, I figure you won't be talking to little people like me, so I want to talk to you now. How are you? I'm doing very well, oh, sir. You. He talked to me. This gentleman here is, is really the president of our association, Mr. John Goebel. Oh, yeah, I do it for the money. Right. Yeah, he says he does it for the money. He does it for nothing. And he's just finished a check ride here with one of our one of our members. So. Did he pass? He, I don't know. Barely. Barely. <laughs> you made, barely made it over those trees. <laughs> That's an automatic failure if you crash into yeah, the tree. Yeah, that would be automatic. I would think you, so. Do you take off like this? Stack? Stack. Yeah. And you'll see uh, that others uh, others will do what they call inverted. So mine is stacked. All stacked together. The inverteds are laid flat. They're checking their line. Everybody checks their lines and make sure the lines are clear. No, no tangles, no knots. And uh, think, then they take it Can from there. The or you uh, yeah, I'll I check it so. again. I got about oh, an hour and 15 minutes on it, maybe 15 minutes on it. I flew about 15 minutes last night with it. Okay. Feels Morning. good. I won't, you won't see me leave very far. Yeah, that's a good idea. Uh, There's a lot of people up here, so that's good. Yeah, I feel comfortable up here. Here, making sure that the lines are all yeah, clean. Not stacked one over another like that one just was. Yeah. Well, I got your triple X shirt. Okay. I think you already paid it. These are my A lines. They remember. they are hooked up to the front part of the of the wing. Yeah. Yeah. These are my B lines. They're hooked up more in the center and the trailing edge. And my steering line right here. The steering line responsible for the, the very trailing edge of the wing uh, is where this where those lines are hooked up and uh, they make a turn. Keeps it away from the prop. Taking my A line. So 
So, uh, you know, there's a, <clears throat> a number of these powered parachutes, but they all basically have the same concept with this Ram Air wing that we talked about earlier. And the principle behind this aircraft, what makes it so easy to fly, is that there's only four functions to the airplane. If you accelerate, it's not going to make you go faster. Obviously, it's going to make you go forward. But once the, the wing is filled up, the Ram Air wing is filled up, it's the fastest it's going to go. Putting more throttle is going to make you climb. I'll explain to you why. So you can only do four things with the airplane, four functions of the airplane, and that's climb, descend, turn right, turn left. By putting more uh, throttle on it, um, what it does, it changes the angle of attack on the wing. So let's imagine, for example, that the wing is up here and the bottom of the airplane is down here. We'll call it the cart, okay? So again, as I talked about earlier, we're at the mercy of wind. So a little bit of wind here, moving the, the wing this way, is going to make the cart sway as well. So we're a pendulum. <clears throat> but what happens is, when we accelerate down the runway here, we've checked the wing, everything is, looks good and everything else, we give it more throttle. If you notice on all of the films, there's more throttle. What it does, it makes the cart go forward. I'll turn side. It makes the cart go forward. It changes the angle of attack on the wing. So the wing climbs. So more throttle is going to make and make you climb. If I back off uh, at a at the whatever uh, cruising altitude it'll be, it'll be to find that cruising altitude. We're neither climbing or descending. We're we're flying straight and level. So uh, each aircraft has its own uh, RPM settings for where they the pilots know where that is. Now, if I'm coming in here, I want to come for a landing. I I pull back throttle. That the, the the cart falls back, the angle of attack on the wing is the we call it the cord line is actually decreases. We descend. At some point, we're going to put a little bit more throttle so that we come back again, but not as much to keep us in flight. We slowly descend. This is all piloting skills. We slowly descend, touch down, and we'll we can keep that wing up for quite a while by taxiing down the runway. But at some point, we have to stall the wing, as I said cutting the power completely off, shutting the magnetos off, the mags off, and we're pulling those those strings as you saw Kevin do. Makes the chute stall, falls behind him. He's still moving forward, so hopefully the chute fall behind him. Now the only other two things you can do is turn right or left. By doing that, these steering rods right here are connected this line. That line goes to Three lines, three smaller, uh, three smaller lines, which separates out again to three other lines. So there are six, six on each end. When I push the right pedal, which pulls that cord, what it does is it brings down the trailing edge of the wing, creates drag, and it makes me turn. I let go of my pedal, the trailing edge goes back flat, and we're going to go straight. And the same thing with the left. I said they were the only four things you could do, climb, descend, turn right, turn left, same thing. If I push the left pedal, it's going to bring the trailing edge of the wing down, create drag, going to make me turn. And it's that simple. That's why these aircraft are so easy to fly. And they're safe to fly because, we've already, first of all, we've already taken care of the parachute before we took off. So if we lost an engine, we could still glide down. And around here, it's even uh, more... Um, it's really nice to fly this area because there's a lot of fields here. Now, a lot of them are mowed and everything else. We could virtually come down in almost any field um, and could even, believe it or not, end up, if you lost an engine, no fields, you could end up in the trees and you will most likely walk away from it. Uh, maybe not without a torn wing or, and you might be hanging there for a while until somebody comes and gets you, but you're probably going to walk away from it. That's why uh, these things are so uh, safe to fly. We're not flying at 80, 90, or 100 miles plus an hour. And if you got to ditch this thing in the, in the trees, you're not going to walk away from that probably, not without substantial uh, damage to an aircraft and probably getting injured yourself. These are much safer than that. Not that we ever want to do that, but but we're moving so slow. That's what makes them so so safe. And, um, and it gets us up in the air. Most of us have piloted something before, whether it's a fixed wing aircraft or whatever. But now we really enjoy just a low and slow flight. And by the way, we don't have a 500 foot restriction uh, that general aviation has. They have to fly at 500 feet or above to be legal unless you're landing or it's an emergency. Powered parachutes are waived, they waive that. The only time they don't want us to fly 
at below 500 feet is over congested area or congested groups of people. And we try to stay away from doing that kind of stuff. And, but it's really enjoyable. Slow and slow flight. We see a lot of animals. We even fly with eagles. That happens quite often. So that's a 2007. It doesn't look it because uh, most aircraft, a lot of aircrafts that are flying today are, were built in the, in the 30s, 40s, and 50s. They're still flying today. Uh, it's because they're well maintained and, uh, and everything else. Although this is a fairly new airplane, the 2007. And uh, the model is an Airwolf, a 912 Airwolf with a 100 horsepower engine on it. And I've been flying since the 80s, uh, fixed wing in the 80s. But uh, I really don't want to go back to fixed wing flying because I just like being in the air. And being in the air for me is mo almost more fun with this. And I really enjoy bringing up passengers because then that experience is new to anybody. I haven't flown many people because of the coronavirus this year because I, I try to be safe about it. But um, my buddy likes to, my, my little partner loves to be able to get in the climb in the back seat and fly with me. And any chance I can get Kelly in the back seat, she loves it. She takes some great photography in the back of that as well. So that's a great place to be able to take photography. By the way, a lot of the photos you see taken by Paul Sear were taken in the back seat of a, of a powered parachute. That's why they're so clear and uh, and so low, you know. Everything looks really good, really, really good. We're almost ready to go. Kelly, you gotta be my passenger today. It took a long time for her to go up with me. Not that she didn't think I was a good pilot, but now that she's got confidence that she feels good flying, I can't get her out of the back seat. So. You're, you're welcome to go up, it's a beautiful morning. We have one more checklist. Are you on? One more checklist here. I've already gone through two checklists. I'm gonna go through one more checklist. Passenger uh, pre-flight is complete. The passenger briefing is complete. The seat, our seat belts are fastened. Yep. Well, our lines are clear. Radio frequency is good. We're set. And we're ready for departure.
Find a point and then do a circle. Okay. You're touching your own hand. You're touching your own hand. He kind of like the idea. He was on there and he still, uh, the straps were not tied up on, the, on his chest. Oh, yeah. That's amazing though, him uh, losing his engine like that again, huh? Yeah. Jeez, he was getting up late before then. A biannual check ride by a certified flight instructor, an FAA a certified person. Every two years, we need to fly with a with an FAA certified person to get our keep our license. You have to unbuckle it. Yeah. Get your eyes on
Well, we, you know, we don't want to store it wet um, unless we know that, you know, we, we, were, we had dew in the morning and we're going to fly in the afternoon or something like that. Well, you know, but storing it wet is not a good idea and very seldom do we do that or damp. It takes out, it takes the life out of the wing. Right now, biggest things I want all these lines on top of the wing. Even though it looks like, oh my God, he's getting them all crossed. And this doesn't matter too much. It's when you're laying it out that's important to make sure the lines are straight. So if they're a little, if they're a little stacked on top of each other, no big deal. Billy's gonna put a something on here called a, uh, a line sock. Kind of, kind of bunches the lines up together. Makes it a little easier for us to fold that wing. Quick question for you, Dave. Lots of these are pretty thick. Yeah, I know. Yeah, go ahead. Can I pass it through these two things? Well, one or two doesn't really matter. I'm just trying to get these lines. The one thing we don't want is a line going over a wing. Even in storage, that would not be good because we could miss it. You'd only miss it when it was launched. You'd catch it then, but. We don't want lines ever to be over a wing or crossed in. That's why we try to get all these lines out of here and where we can see them. try to do is put this slide this line line sock or sleeve and I'm trying to put my finger in there because I don't want to pinch these lines I don't want these lines to be at all hit with a zipper so I, I leave a finger ahead of the zipper Now Kelly and I have a process where we, when we fold this at a certain way and we'll take the, we'll start with the yellow and we're going to fold it to the center where there's a tag. We're going to come back, do it again. We're going to go on the other side. Again, making sure that all the lines are inside the canopy and we can see them. You got a piece of grass or grass or grass on Line? Oh. Last two folds is should end up with a red. Can you can you get one more roll out of this one, Kel? I can cut nope. it in tighter. Yeah, let's do this. Let's go over on. Put your put your right one down, and then let's roll the red red one over. 
to give us a little smaller can of feeding. Now we need to take the air out. But, and because the, the air won't come out of this way on that runway wing, it's gonna go out of the exhaust or the intake, right? So we gotta get the air out of that wing. Try to get grasshoppers not on this thing because grasshoppers will get caught in there and they'll make tiny, tiny little holes. <laughs> and uh, not that it would affect the, the plight or the, but you know, it's no one any holes in a wing. <laughs> Taking out most of the air, start to fold it back. In my case, some people just throw it on the seat. I like to hang it on the bars. Start, started flying this 15, 16 years ago. I used to have a passenger all the time, so it was really easy. My wife would, would help us out. We, we'd fly the Balloon Fest in Lewiston. And, oh. uh, it was always nice because we, we'd be packed up in no time. The balloons take such a long time to pack up. Yeah, are they having it this year? What's that? The Balloon Festival. Usually it's, at, it's in yeah, August. No, okay. Because 